Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, and for the first time ever in Hoovy's Garage, may I present to you a completely worthless car. If something major were to break on this thing, it would be worth absolutely nothing because there's not too many of these left on the road, but there are plenty of these 90s Cadillac Sevilles in the junkyard. Now this Cadillac is still running beautifully. It looks great. It only has 66,000 miles, but that makes it less than worthless. Yes, less than worthless. And why you ask? Well, I have over 7,000 reasons why and a few more. Of course, any old luxury sedan is going to be worth way less than what it costs brand new. That's what I've built my entire YouTube channel on, but there are some exceptions in 90 sedans as they become more collectible. A Lincoln Town Car, for example, or an Acura Legend, or several European luxury cars from the 90s have become collectible and extremely valuable if they're very nice, like, like this Cadillac. I bought it from the original owner, and it only has 66,000 miles, and it is a museum piece of early Cadillac North Star generation cars. It's probably one of the last survivors in the world, but it's still worth absolutely nothing. I paid only $3,000 for this very nice running and driving car, which may seem like a good deal, but I I'm beginning to realize I'm massively overpaid, massively overpaid. Now, for a car to become collectible, it has to have a group of people that actually want to own it. In the case of the Lincoln Town Car, it's because it's the last real drive, old school, frame on body land yacht that you could still buy. It was the last of the Mohicans. It also helps that the Lincoln is really durable. It's a practical daily driver even today. In the case of the Acura Legend, Lexus LS 400, and several European makes, that's the case as well. It's a really practical car, but also simpler in comparison to the newer, latest offerings. So it's a big appeal to people that hate the word infotainment. Those old school enthusiasts that want a simple bank vault-like build quality. In the case of this Cadillac Seville STS, it doesn't have that bank vault build quality. It's not simple. It's not reliable. The only thing it's famous for is blowing its head gasket at 100,000 miles. But there's more reasons why this Cadillac is worthless. Nearly all cars have their weak points, but the Cadillac North Star head gasket problem is probably the worst that I've ever heard of, the most widespread, the most devastating, and ridiculous. I covered it quite a bit in my last video, but to refresh you, what happens with this all aluminum, almost 300 horsepower V8, is the bolts that hold down the aluminum heads to the aluminum block, they, they strip in the fragile aluminum block. This allows a death match between the combustion chamber and the cooling system, which results in the death of the owner's wallet. The estimate to repair this issue often exceeds the value of the car several times over, which prompts the owner logically to dump it for as quickly as possible for whatever amount of money they can get. And this is no secret. Pretty much any hoopty buyer knows that a pre-2000 Cadillac with the North Star is, is a don't buy under any circumstance. So the only people still buying these things are dumb car YouTubers with automotive masochistic tendencies, or they just like a lot of drama. It's drama. Now the head gases are certainly the main reason why this Cadillac is worthless, but it's not the only reason. Any old car is going to have issues as it ages, but the cost of the parts, the ease of repairs, can go a long way to making it more valuable, desirable, something that people actually want to own, and this Cadillac fails miserably in this department as well. I bought this car out of Florida from the original owner. I was told it was a little old lady, given the whole story, but when I bought it, it had a few obvious problems. Number one, which I noticed when I got back to Chile, Kansas, is the heater doesn't work. It blows air conditioned air, but it doesn't switch over to warm air. Additionally, there's a clunk in the front suspension, and I noticed when I look underneath that the engine looks pretty oily. It's not like a big catastrophic oil leak, but it's just really oily and, and nasty under there. Now, normally when I have issues like this, I take it to my trusted mechanic, the car wizard, for his honest assessment, but I was curious what the dealer would think all these issues would cost to fix, the local Cadillac dealer, because that's what most people do when they own a Cadillac. They, they take it to the Cadillac dealer for repairs. And I wanted to show you how a few minor issues, seemingly minor issues, can also total one of these cars. Oh boy, did it exceed my wildest expectations. Let me get the estimate in here. Oh, I'm out. 
Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, you went to the dealer and their prices are ridiculous, but honestly, I can't blame the dealer for charging as much as they do. They're big facilities. They have a lot of overhead with their equipment and employees. They got to pay for that somehow. And also, when you go to the dealer, the service is much more consistent and usually quicker than trying your luck at a random independent shop. And actually, I used to work at the Cadillac dealership that I took this car to. I worked there over 10 years ago. It was under different ownership. But they did a fantastic job diagnosing all of the issues with this car. I really didn't want to figure out why the heater wasn't working because this weird 90s automatic climate control with the blend doors and computers and all that. So I was happy to pay the $100 diagnostic fee for them to figure that out for me and poke around the rest of the Cadillac to see what else they thought was wrong. So here is the little book that they wrote <laughs> on all of the issues with my Cadillac. It's really not that many, not more than the ones that I noticed that were obvious, but the estimates, holy moly. So let's dive into it. To fix my heater, the HVAC programmer processor has failed. It's a computer somewhere inside of the dashboard and they want $769 to replace it. $769, yeah, <laughs> it gets worse. My clunk in the front suspension is the sway bar end links. And while they were looking around the suspension in the front and back, they also noticed that my brakes were getting kind of low as well, maybe borderline. They want $337 to replace the sway bar end links and $209 for the front and $209 for the back. It's the same to replace the front brakes and resurface the rotors. Not bad, but we haven't gotten to the big enchilada yet. And that is the oil leak. My oil leak is coming from the engine oil pan, a common oil leak, as well as the valve cover gaskets. Now this wouldn't be the end of the world, except the North Star engine, as you saw earlier, is mounted the wrong way. Instead of being mounted like a normal V8 that's rear wheel drive, it's mounted transversely, sideways, because this is a front wheel drive based vehicle. And to reach this oil pan, there's now an entire subframe and suspension in the way versus a pan being in between there. Same with the valve cover gasket, the front one, not too hard to reach, but the back one is around the firewall. And there's a lot of things that need to come out of the way in order to get the valve cover gasket off. Now, the valve cover gasket replacement isn't too bad. It's $769, but the oil pan requires removing the engine. Removing the engine, not from the top, but from the bottom. So you have to drop the subframe, the front suspension, basically the entire front half of the car, the, the body's still attached, to take the engine out of the subframe and fix this oil leak. The cost of that, $4,629. So in addition to all of that, they also noted that the battery was borderline. They wanted $246 to replace that, bringing the total estimate of repairs with my Cadillac Seville STS to $7,623.30. Now, if you were the owner of this Cadillac and noticed the heater wasn't working and it needed an oil change, so you sent it in to get fixed and got this $7,000 estimate, you would be wanting to dump this car as quickly as possible on, on some idiot like me or trading it in and, and just, just dumping it. Which has me curious. There is one dealer in town that will buy any car, no matter what condition, no matter what it is, they will always put a dollar figure behind it. So I'm going to take it to CarMax to see how much they think my Cadillac Seville STS is worth in its current condition. This is going to be bad. <laughs> It's funny, my second job ever in the car business was at that Chevy Cadillac, and at the time it was a BMW store as well. I was a salesman there, but my first job in the car business was CarMax. I was there opening day for their Wichita location, so it was kind of a trip down memory lane. From there, I started my own car dealership uh, after I finished college. Didn't do very well with that, and have moved on to other great things like making horrible YouTube videos. But back to this Cadillac. I know the CarMax process really well because I was on the inside and I know this car isn't going to present itself very well. The previous owners had converted the suspension, which was an active air ride, into a traditional suspension setup. And that's because the parts for this air suspension just really aren't available anymore. So aftermarket companies have been selling conversion products for years. It works fine, but it gives you a service ride control error message that you have to reset 
every time you start the car. So when the CarMax buyer looks at this, they're going to see this big surface ride control warning message, and then they're going to notice the clunk in the suspension as they drive this thing around the block. Now, I doubt they're going to find any recent wholesale comps for this car. There's so few still in existence and even fewer going through auctions running under their own power that that's probably impossible. But they can look through their vast history of, of their, their purchase histories and know this thing's worthless. I'm curious though, will it be the lowest CarMax offer that I've ever received ever? And that's a pretty low bar because they offered $500 for my Chrysler LeBaron that was rusted so badly there were holes through the floor that I, I could put my fist through. And they offered $1,000 for an old Chrysler minivan. That was in much nicer shape, but it was still a, an early 90s Chrysler minivan. I'm expecting it to be somewhere in between there, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's less. Much less. We'll see. Oh, I am good. I am, I am so good. They should just hire me back here to do appraisals because I nailed it. I estimated somewhere between $500 and $1,000 and CarMax is offering $700. $700 for a car that I paid $3,000 for just a few weeks ago. For those who have been following my channel for a long time, you know that I've lost a lot more money than that on cars, but I just wanted to do this to demonstrate how devastating it could be to own one of these. You buy it, it's nice and pretty, you buy it from the original owner, it's it's beautiful, you think, you notice a few minor issues, but it's cheap. And then you get an estimate and see all the things that are actually wrong with it, and it's, it's devastating, and then you dump it as soon as possible and lose thousands of dollars. It's a common story, and I know it's not just with Cadillac. People do this all the time when they buy BMWs or other European cars that they just don't know any better and get killed like this. But I really have to poke Cadillac with this because they have thrown away years and decades, a whole generation of brand goodwill by making this really unreliable, really poorly engineered car that is worthless after a few years and has turned off an entire generation of buyers. And this is something I think other automakers should really pay attention to because a poor quality product like this completely sunk a whole generation of brand goodwill. Now we all know that Cadillacs are like this and if other makes don't clean up their act with their very common issues that are becoming more and more obvious, they could follow down this path. Building a quality car first that's engineered well and serviceable is really, really important and I hope automakers don't lose sight of that and become the next Cadillac. But we're not done with this video yet. I'm kind of curious what the car wizard has to say about all these repairs because I imagine he's going to be able to save me a few bucks from these massive repairs. So let's get to the wizard's lair. Hello wizard. Look at my clean little old lady one owner, Florida 93 Cadillacs of Ill STS. Oh, wow. Isn't it beautiful? It's absolutely worthless, but it's beautiful. It is an amazing cosmetic condition cosmetic, mechanically, but not, not the head gasket, not the head gasket. I was wondering if it has a head gasket no. already. Original head gasket, it's doing fine, um, but uh, there are other problems. I've already had it inspected. Oh, you did? I went to the dealer and had it inspected. You, you cheated on me. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I cheated on you, yes. Shame yes. On you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just curious what their estimates would be, because people do say sometimes in the comment section, that you, you rip me off. That's what they say. They, they, they do say it. You. So I was curious what they would uh, price these jobs at and then what you would price it. I'm not gonna show you these numbers They're right here. I'm just gonna have you look up what it would cost for you to do these items. Okay. And then we'll, we'll see if the wizard truly is ripping me off. Fair game. Fair game? Fair game. You ready? All right, we'll go into his office and get this done. All right, here's the list. It's really not that long. So I have no heat in the car. And they said it's because of the HVAC programmer processor. So basically the computer. And then the lower crankcase reseal is what they call it, but basically the oil pan. And then my sway bar end links, left and right, are clunking. Okay. Valve cover gaskets and brake job. And a battery. You'll probably need a few minutes with your computer to figure all that out. So I'll just throw in some of the, the music while you click around, right? Okay, sounds good. You know the tune. Do, 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 do. 
Actually, rather than stare at the wizard for five minutes, I figured I'd go check on the hoopties. And some progress is being made on the Border Patrol Raptor. Look at this light bar. Junior Mint is wiring it up. I've also dropped the headliner to mount the light bar, which is green. It's going to glow green, not red and blue to scare people. And then look at this mean thing, a Go Rhino roll bar. And it has these little lights that actually fold into the bar itself. It's electric and it folds back and forth. Super cool. As much as I've been knocking this car through this entire video, it is so pretty. It is so pretty and it really did drive super nicely. I probably will fix it. I don't think I'm going to dump it. See what the wizard has to say. Okay, let's compare notes. Cadillac dealer versus car wizard. Starting with the HVAC programmer. I can get you a good used one, guaranteed to work, and install it for $250. <laughs> really? Yeah. They want $769. $769? Yeah, you, you saved me 500 bucks. <laughs> How about the suspension clunk and the brakes they said were borderline? On the suspension clunk was your sway bar links. Yeah. I can put two brand new ones on with labor for 200 bucks. $200, which is a pretty big savings off of the $337 that they originally quoted. 337 so pretty good savings. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not as big as the programmer, but still uh, a good $100 is nothing to sneeze at. Great job and get pads all around, and resurface the rotors for two, 225 somewhere in the middle. Okay, and they wanted 420 for that. So another $200 in savings with the car wizard. Mm -hmm. what, what a deal. So the battery, I don't imagine you're saving me. Very much money, 200 bucks. Batteries are batteries. They're all 200 bucks, pretty much, yeah, pretty much yeah. everywhere. So, how about the oil leak? This, this just should be good. Oh, the oil pan resale. Uh huh. The crankcase. Yes. The motor has to come out really to get to that. I could do it for 1,600 to two grand. 1,600 dollars. They wanted 4,600 dollars. 4,600. 4,600 dollars. So you're saving me three grand. <laughs> I can install head studs in that engine for $4,000. I mean, really getting that fixed it'll, in one or two years, probably it's going to leak again. Yeah. I don't even know if it's worth fixing. I can tighten the bolts and see if we can stem the whole flow. It, it doesn't even drip, really. I just noticed it's a little oily under there. So it's, oh, it may not even be worth it. It's not worth it. Pretty much every North Star is oily underneath. That's that's just a given. You just you just live with it. That's normal. So what's your grand total then? Twenty nine fifty. So basically, right at three grand. Right at three grand, and this one's at seven thousand six hundred and twenty three dollars. Oh my god, seven thousand dollars. <laughs> so you're saving me four thousand dollars, wizard. Not that I'm going to do the the oil pan reseal or the valve cover gas because it's just normal oil leak. So really, I'm spending maybe a thousand dollars to sort out this Cadillac realistically. I need, I need the heater fixed though, so I'm just going to yeah. leave it with you. Okay. Well, that's good because I have the Fiat ready. The Fiat's done? The A-Barth. I can take the A-Bar, oh, I say A-Barth wrong. The, I can take the A-Fart home. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you for watching.